we're going to be making Korean fried chicken um, in a brioche burger with our own fermented kimchi. Um, perfect to do at home. For the Korean fried chicken burger, I'm going to recommend you use the thigh meat. I find it's the best part of the chicken. The meat has got far more flavour and it's much more tender as well. And especially in frying, it won't dry out so easily. So I'm going to show you how to debone the chicken thigh. So it's an L-shaped bone. Just run your knife straight down the bone on the drumstick and on the thigh as you'll start seeing the chicken bone. And what you need to do is you need to cut around it. I work off the top one first and that bone should come out quite easily. When you have cut around it, is just break the bone and it chops off quite easily. Uh, be careful of any sh bone shrapnel in there. If that seems a bit daunting to you, you can actually ask your butcher to do it or actually buy them already pre-boned. So again, on the drumstick, just cut down on it, run the knife, and then the bone should come out quite easily. Check for any sinew, and there we are. Here's your chicken thigh. For the Korean fried chicken burger, um, I actually take off the skin as well, because um, in the batter, that's not really gonna crisp up, so it's gonna be nice if we just use pure thigh meat. Again with the skin, just run your fingers under it and the skin just pops straight off and our chicken thigh is ready for frying. Now we've got the um, a deboned chicken thigh, I'm going to move on to making the batter. Um, the batter needs to be a blend of seasoning and then also crispiness. So what I do first is a really old trick that was taught to me when I was young my parents in their restaurant is actually to make a seasoned water before you make the batter. Water is such a big component of the texture of the batter that actually there's an opportunity to get flavour into that. So I get a knob of ginger, put into a blender, or some garlic cloves, a good handful into there, and also some spring onions and some onion. I'm going to put a shallot in there as well, just peel that, and then put about a pint's worth of water in. that goes straight into the blender. The reason why I've done this is now I've got all this uh, seasoned water that's aromatic from the ginger, the shallots and the garlic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it through a fine sieve and that's going to form the basis of my um, Korean fried chicken. Now, I don't want to chuck the pulp away as well. So what we do in the restaurants is we use this for our kimchi. So um, we've got zero waste as well. I've got a flour mixture here. So it's a blend of potato starch, corn starch and flour. I've also got a slight spice mixture in there as well, mainly consisting of gochugara, which is Korean chili flakes, and togarashi, which is a Japanese spice mix almost like the Japanese five spice. My secret ingredient actually in to make the chicken really crispy, just a little bit of baking powder. What the baking powder does is it almost wants to flare out that batter so it's really crunchy. But at the same time, the egg in the batter almost holds it back together. So those two contrasting sort of things is what's gonna then keep that batter really crispy. I'm gonna crack two eggs into there. And then I'm gonna use the seasoned ginger water to form the batter. Whisk that together. You can actually have your batter as thick or as thin as you like. And Korean fried chicken is one of my um, guilty pleasures, actually. So you can have them in a bao, burger, um, on top of noodles. Um, kind of like choice is endless. I'm also going to put the seasonings in this batter as well. So I'm going to put sugar, salt in there. So almost this batter acts as a brine as well as a batter. So when the chicken goes in, you leave this in the fridge overnight and it goes straight into the fryer in the morning and then all that flavour will penetrate throughout the thigh. This is my favourite section in the kitchen, wok burn. And this is a frying wok as well, so they're a little bit deeper than the normal stir fry wok. Today we're going to twice fry Korean fried chicken. Uh, why do we do that? It's because um, you can get the chicken much crispier like that. You want to fry it so it's cooked through, cool it down and then fry it right at the end on a really high temperature and that's gonna make um, the Korean fried chicken really special. Guys at home, if you've got a deep fat fryer, that's the, uh, that's the easiest way to do this. Careful it doesn't stick at the bottom. The best way to check whether or not the chicken is cooked is with a thermometer. Once it reaches 75 degrees in the middle, you know it's cooked. I'm gonna take them out. 
I'm going to let them cool down slightly. So I'm going to crank up the heat and get them as crispy as I can. The chicken's cooled down a bit. So I'm going to slip this in. And this is what's going to make it super crispy. Look at that. Perfect Korean fried chicken. Now the chicken's fried, we're going to start assembling the burger. I've got a brioche, I'm going to slightly toast it on the hot plate. If you haven't got that at home, um, just burn the grill, it works perfectly well. Here's our lovely Korean fried chicken, really crispy. You can do whatever topping you want on this sauce wise, but I recommend a QP mayo. Then I've got a Korean gochujang as well, but it's a Korean uh, chili sauce, really rich and spicy. On top of that, we got some of that lovely kimchi, which I've shown you how to make in another video. So that goes right on the top there. Some freshly garnished spring onions, the toasted top, pressed down slightly. And here we are. Here's my Korean fried chicken burger. Really crispy chicken, slightly spicy. We've got a rich Kewpie mayo, the gochujang, and the best bit. Um, our house-made kimchi, um, which you can do at home as well. Adding that little bit of fizziness, the tang to it as well. Um, it's just a really unique burger and um, absolutely delicious. And you should definitely try this at home.